Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Tristcast. I am your host, Tristan Dario, and I invite you to sit back, relax, catch a vibe, and enjoy the show. Hey, y'all, take a moment before you get settled. Follow the Tristcast and leave a rating. All right, I'll see you in today's episode. Peace. Turn, turn mic down a bit. How about that? How we doing? We should be... Okay, cool. So we should be getting started here in a moment. Um, I should be recording on both ends. You guys should be able to see me. I am um, not used to using the iPad right now, but dude... Guys, everybody, everyone who is here to watch. Oh, you know what? This is perfect. Now that I'm using the iPad, um, I can do this. Um... and post here we are ladies and gentlemen gender fluid whatever i welcome in welcome all right we're in here everything's oh no that's not uploaded yet okay so let's get down into it now that we're set up and all we're ready to go I don't know how long this will be. I don't know how long we will be recording, but you know, we're we're here. We're having a great time no matter no matter what. If we're all here chilling out on a Monday, taking advantage of the moments we have to be present and enjoy ourselves, you know? This is one year extravaganza for the podcast, the Tristcast. One year of growth, one year of just Building the community and where it's at right now. This is this is year one of what amazing things are to come, you know? So, like, so let's get comfortable. Let's enjoy the vibes. I don't know what song we're on right now. I would really like to listen to my voice. But for me, I, I'd hear my voice twice. Let me see what we're listening to. Don't medicate. Oh my gosh, J. Cole, baby. Let's go. Oh man. All right. All right. All right. All right. To get this started, one thing I really want to talk about that I've been really noticing is the things that are mine, the things that I uniquely want, the things that make me so happy. I've been thinking about my future. I've been thinking about what it is and where it is I want to go, what it is I want to do, what kind of place I want to make for myself, my oasis. You know, I love that word because oasis, it just sounds so calming, comfortable, inspirational, you know, but I've been, I've been going through like my interior design types that I want, you know, I've been, I, I have been like this boho yet like postmodern with eccentric vibes, you know, I, I, I'm really into LED lights, ambient lighting, I'm really into making a space where not only you're going to be comfortable, but you have this sense of creativity that just blasts off. Like, I want to have knickknacks and artistic little trinkets that are all around my place that inspire our own sense of creativity. Uh, curiosity. Like, what is this? Where do you find this? Like, why? why is this giving me your kind of energy like why am I seeing this and like uh I don't know anyone else except you Tristan who would have this like 
When I think of my own place, I think of it as a home that embodies me. So when you are inside of it, you only get like the vibe of Tristan being next to you, except it's all around you. And it's just, ooh, it just gives me this warmth. It gives me this peace because, you know, when I think about my fortress of solitude, when I think about the place that protects me, but not only protects me, but helps me be gentle on myself, grow within myself, but grow outside of that. And not only for myself, but use my growth being what can inspire others to grow how they can be comfortable in their own skin and be able to chase what matters to them. And what matters to me is being able to start a business, take that business further, be able to help people in the world that a lot of other look past and don't even look at them and treat them as if they're not human beings themselves. So much. When I think about that kind of shit, I'm just like, oh, I, I'm so excited because I've been really recognizing where I'm at currently present right now and I'm just like everything I'm doing everything that I've done has led to this very moment and and I've been really trying to train my mind strengthen it and see how capable I actually am how capable all of us are. I had this incredible thought. I was I was medicating, you know, I, I was medicating not too long ago and I was on a drive. And I I do this thing where I take mental notes. If I'm not able to write down something I want to remember, if I'm not able to make a reminder, I have to be intentional. So I say mental note. And then I say what I need to say. And I say mental note again, so then my brain will not forget it. So on this drive, I'm on my way home, just went out to get food for my uncle. And thought of the day, thought of the day, thought of the day. That comes up, and then I'm like, okay, I can't pick up my phone. Mental note. And it said, think about how much of the shit that's happening in our lives is actually happening in our head. And then when we realize how much of that's actually happening in our head, when we realize that we are the ones in charge of our minds, and that is so difficult when we hear it, we're like, how the fuck do we strengthen our minds when we got all this shit going on in our heads? When we got all this shit we may be worried about, all these things that we want to do. It's kind of like what one of my friends Emma says, you got to pick one fucking thing. And once you pick that one thing, you go on to the next thing. And when you get on to the next thing, once that completes, you move on to the next thing. Just because you got a whole range of shit in front of you doesn't mean you got to attack each and every single fucking thing right in front of you. You can take your time. It's because we have this idea in our minds that it's a fucking race. If, and if we do not run fast enough, we're not going to get there. But then you realize that each of our own lives, we have our own unique pace. And then once we are able to go within, turn within ourselves and say, holy shit, I am in charge and, incap and I'm capable of this. I'm not incapable. Why the fuck would I ever think that I'm not incapable? Why in the hell did I ever think that I did not have the ability to do this? Oh, my God. It's like I think back a year ago when Emma was telling me, Tristan, you got all these ideas you want to do. Just fucking sit down and pick one and just go with it. And I landed on my own podcast. And it's just so funny how everything happens exactly the fucking way it's supposed to. I'm very grateful. Very grateful. Because, dude, I, this whole year... This whole fucking year since September 23rd when the trailer of the podcast came out. When that trailer came out, dude, it sparked a huge transition. And this is a great fucking song by Tyler, the creator, that's playing. So, any, oh my God, you can't, uh, my camera. All right, cool. I, th I guess this will be okay for now. But um, as I was saying, we have the potential to work towards what it is we want. And we decide when we start doing that. 
We can either decide to chase our dreams and do what it is that we want that makes us feel alive and we can choose to worry about the shit that we got to handle or we understand we have shit to take care of. We understand that we want to chase our dreams and we maneuver our world around how we can make sure that actually flows. Now, what I mean by that, the situation I'm in or like how my life is set up, you know, Granted, I went through a period where, like, I didn't get to do this, and it took me several years to get started on my own podcast again. But, um, you know, when we decide what we are working toward, it's like when we're thinking we're supposed to be working toward making our family happy, doing what they believe is the right choices because they don't want to see us get hurt. They don't want to see us fall down. They want to protect us. So they're going to influence their opinions on what they think we should do because of the security, because of what the protections we have. Oh, you have a salary. You have all these bills you don't have to worry about because now your job provides your health insurance, your vision insurance, your dental insurance. Then you're stuck in this whole period where then you only get to take a vacation for two weeks once you put in a year of work I don't believe that I believe my opportunities for my life is I get to create and if this is the stuff I have to do to get me ready to make my own kind of work that I want to do my work has the potential to take me all over the fucking world I would rather do what is going to take me to the places that achieve my goals and dreams that's what I want to do now Working at fucking Home Depot was not doing that for me. That had me stuck in a fucking time loop. But that time loop taught me many fucking lessons. It taught me get the fuck out of the time loop. Start going and enjoying yourself. Put your dreams first. You don't got to do this because of the fucking security. The security is what's holding you back. That's what's strengthening your fear. Because you're too scared to make that decision because of the security you already have. When I made that decision to fucking leave, I was scared shitless. I was down in the bottom. I had no money. I was in debt. I was freaking the fuck out how I was going to make anything work. I wasn't eating well. wasn't able to exercise. I wasn't able to help myself. But the second I started putting more effort into my mental health, into my physical health, into creating, into doing, when I started putting myself first in the means of my happiness needs to come, I need to do the things that I know I deserve. That influenced a different mindset. Then what influenced me was, okay, I can choose where I want to place myself or I can choose how I improve on this path. And then I find those ways. And, you know, I came across a lot of people who have helped me figure out ways to benefit myself, i.e. Chloe Sullivan, one of my greatest friends. Number one thing she was telling me when I was in the hardest part of my life, when I started this podcast, help yourself, help yourself. If you're finding yourself doing things that aren't making certain things easier for your day-to-day or for your weeks, you have to influence ways that you could lower that stress, lower how much you got to fucking worry about. Because if you can take care of some things ahead of time, that benefits you from having to worry about it later. It's kind of like it's definitely working on procrastination. If you feel that you should be working on something because like you have the time to do it, this is like right now, for example, when I work, I I was in the, when I first got back to Missouri this time, I was working, but I was also trying to do so much other shit while I was working. And I didn't realize that I was burning myself out. I was overcompensating the energy I had because I was more worried about how much I sh- I, bu- I expected myself to push out without giving myself realistic boundaries. So I changed that up. When I'm working, if I feel inspired while I'm working to make a TikTok or make a really inspirational video, I'll do that. I'll do that if I feel this is the perfect time. But if I feel that I am forcing it 
and I don't feel comfortable, I feel overstimulated, that is my answer to not do what I'm doing. So, like, I love being able to do what I have to do. And then, like, when I have the time to create, I don't feel forced. I just, like, right now, oh, my God, I feel so good. I feel so fucking good because I am doing it at the pace I need. Lately, I was just having a conversation about my use of social media. Like, how are you doing now that you're not on Twitter? I'm feeling fucking great. It's not a part of my routine anymore. I don't have to swipe up mindless scroll on that anymore. I don't have, like, don't get me wrong. I had a lot of great, like, inspirational shit. But, like, it's still, it, to me, it didn't feel like it served me anymore. Just like how Instagram's getting. But, like, the only difference with Instagram is because Instagram is a way that I am able to reach out to the people that I know are a part of the community who are close to me. It's just another way to, like, show you guys I'm going live. So, obviously, you know, it's it, it's more like... Know you so well. But maybe some, oh, my gosh, this is a great song. Oh my gosh, I was deep thought in that, but, you know, music's playing now that, you know, we're on live. I love that I do these. I was given this idea. I was told, hey man, you should start doing that. You know, you like streaming. You could just stream podcast episodes before they come out. And I'm like, oh my God, that's a great idea. Um, But creatively, you know. There's times where I still go in my stagnant areas, but you need stagnancy in moments to really help you in the ways that you could improve or, you know, evolve creatively. And lately, you know, when I medicate, I have gotten incredible ideas like just be yourself. Don't be afraid of being yourself. Don't be afraid of being yourself. I was afraid of being myself for a long time. Even when I started this podcast, I was afraid of being myself in certain ways. I was blocking off certain things of my whole self. I wasn't prepared to look within in some ways because I didn't realize how important it was. But I have friends who tell me how important it is. You know, like Chloe was one of those people telling me, Tristan, like understanding yourself so that you understand yourself in a means you're not going out, projecting on anyone, like you're not... Yeah, it's so much. But I was dealing with being myself because I was afraid of who was actually seeing me. I was afraid who was perceiving me. I was afraid people were going to look at me, say one thing, say this, say that. And I was just like, I don't need that pressure in my life. I mean, fuck's sake. I was already putting unrealistic expectations on myself as if that was fucking good for my health. Not at all. It's good to have an expectation on yourself and, and to it's it's very good to like hold yourself at a certain level. And that is very good, you know, and like positive and healthy stress is good for when you're trying to keep up. It's very good for your health. But overstimulating and over pressuring, pressuring yourself into doing things that you really want to do, but because you feel so pressured, you're not going to do it organically. You're not going to feel that the work you're doing is good because you're so focused on what you think you need to be doing. You're so focused on what everybody else may want. But the audience, I, I heard this incredible podcast point, and it was the audience. It was, it was um, oh, I forget his name. But the point of it is, the audience doesn't know what they want anyway. As a creative, when you're a creative and, you, and you're you sitting here putting all this emphasis on what everyone else may want, half the time they don't even know what they want. That's why it's the artist, it's the artist who is listening within themselves, believing in what they think needs to be put out. That is the real shit. Instead of assuming that, oh, dude, I got to do this because this is going to make other people happy and it's not putting my happiness first. Dude, can't I can't I can't do that anymore. I don't want to people please anymore. I want to put myself first. I want to, dude. I saw another incredible fucking podcast episode that I um saw on TikTok or Insta. I believe 
It was TikTok. Uh oh. Conventional garden. A regenerative garden? Ooh. American Climate Corps. My friend Chloe sent me a lot of cool stuff to uh um here it is. It was a interview with Lisa Nichols. And basically what the video was is basically talking about how there was a point in her life where she had to put herself first. She was people pleasing, trying to bring everybody with her. You know, they say you are the one who fits through the door. You can't bring everybody else through that door. If you're trying, if you're trying to make it somewhere, you got to be able to chase your dreams. Tyler, the creator says it in one of his songs. It's like, if you're living with a dream, chase it motherfuck the team i mean and it's not like fuck the team but it's like if we focus more about making everybody happy instead of chasing like what makes us feel alive like we're doing what we're supposed to be doing here in this experience we're gonna regret more because we tried pushing everybody else above us before putting ourselves first i can't and i won't do that if I want to bring people with me, I got to walk through that door by myself. I have to figure out my shit by myself. I got to do that work. So then when I get to the place that I am actually able to bring other people with me, that's when I can bring people with me. Take care of yourself first. Get yourself to the point where you are able to take care of other, or not even just take, not take care of other people, but take care of yourself so that when you are at your healthiest, you can be there for others. And that you, when you make it, you can bring the people that you wanted to bring with you in the beginning, rather than trying to make it there and bring everybody with you at the same time. It's just not realistic for yourself. It's, it, you are overstraining yourself just to make everybody else happy and to meet all these other expectations rather than just doing what is bringing you ease, making you feel flow and understanding that you got to go through the judgment. You got to go through those points where people are like, fuck you for being selfish. They won't understand because they're still following what was pushed onto them or taught onto them. There's a better way of saying it. People just go along with what they're taught and they believe that that is the only right way. So then when we go outside of that, the people that see us do that, they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? How could you do that? What about us? I never stopped thinking about you. I never even thought about leaving you behind. But how am I supposed to move forward if I'm just thinking about bringing you to the, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, when, But we live in this society where, you know, we are supposed to put ourselves first, but it's like when you go on an airplane or we, society teaches us to put other people before ourselves. But then when we figure out that we're supposed to take care of ourselves so that we're capable of being able to be there for other people, it's like when you go on a fucking airplane, the, the pilots or the flight attendants tell you, put on your mask first, then take care of the person next to you. So it's a complete conflict. Like, it's conflicted. Take care of yourself so then you can help others. But everybody in select, like people in select families, they're going to get taught, no, you don't think about yourself. You got to think about your family first. You got to think about us first. Then you can think about yourself. And, you know, families don't automatically do that as a means of, like, out of selfishness. They do that because our families take care of us. And, you know, sometimes they they need that too. But if it becomes strictly only what they want and it's not about what we want, that selfishness is taught onto us. So that we are then completely selfish to what is for us, what we want for ourselves, you know. And then that's where, you know, at least in my experience, that's where a lot of my imposter syndrome came from. My family tells me to do this. This is what they taught me to do. This is what they taught me to believe in. These are the morals they wanted me to have and the ways and the values they wanted me to live by. But then I went into solitude. I went internally and I I created my own geoncology of morale. 
I created my values. I know what I stand for. I know what I care about. I know what I want to do for the world. And whether or not my family agrees, whether or not my family is disappointed, they don't live my life. And I don't live theirs. I choose to live my life exactly the way I want. And I will remain kind. You know, it's it's actually a great quote. Noel Miller, I watch him on YouTube. He goes, you know, we could be selfish, selfless people. That means we we are selfish in the ways that we have to put ourselves first but not forget the fact that we have to also be selfless, you know? We can't just think about ourselves. That's narcissistic as fuck. (laughs) We can't just think about what it is we want and what we want to do. We got to be able to think about the other people. But if we are putting more of our energy into the people around us rather than putting the energy we need in ourselves so that we can be around, you know, be there for other people, that's where it's really important. That's where you really got to think about, you know, is this pleasing another person? Is this going against what I need right now? Am I just trying to meet this so that all these people are happy before even questioning if you were happy in the beginning of it all? Like, it's like doing something out of the kindness of your heart. Don't do it because you feel like you have to. Do it because you want to. And at least because you want to do it, that's going to make you feel better about yourself because you did something for someone else that ultimately helped you. But don't do it because you feel you have to. Don't do it because you're afraid to say no. Learn how to say no. Give yourself in the moments where you have the ability to give yourself. Don't don't over overflow the cup because all these people told you to do this. You know, we may have all these different people in our heads trying to guide us in one one in a million ways. But if we're not listening to our heart, if we're not following our intuition, we're just going to regret it. Because we're doing it out of a means to make other people happy or what other people told us is going to make us happy. You can't sit here and tell me this is going to make me happy because of your own experience. That's what made you happy. Your happiness is different from my happiness. And what is going to make me happy, it may make you happy, but that we don't know that. So it's more like just do what makes you happy. Go to the go and do what it is that's going to, you know, fulfill you. And if you gotta work to make up the money to get to that position, do that because then you have a goal. Then you know what your goal is, you know what your vision is, and you know what you have to do. Instead of being afraid, instead of falling into the ideas that I don't have what I need at the moment to get started, we have exactly what we need to get started. And there's no better time than the present to make our dreams come true. So let's not put those dreams aside if we are in a position where we are capable of doing that, and you know, not a lot of us are at our age. When you're in your mid twenties, you may already have a family started, and you are only working toward your, you know, that may be your dream, and that you want your kids to have the opportunity to chase their dreams, whatever it may be. But never feel like you don't have the opportunity even to get started, because. The idea that baby steps won't get you there, baby steps will get you there. If you add at least 1% of energy and intention into your daily lifestyle on bettering something or getting further in something or trying to improve or grow creatively, because you're actively putting in that intention, you're making growth. You're making consistent growth. Yes, are you... you're only doing a little bit at a time. Baby steps are still taking steps. You know, like whether or not how fast you grow, you know, you don't want it to go too fast because what if you're not ready for it and you don't even know how to comprehend it and it leads you in a direction that negatively impacts you. You weren't ready for it, so why the fuck were you going to force it? You got to take it easy. You got to let life take its role, take its flow. And you get there when you get there instead of stressing about how fast you got to get there. Like that has been a part of that has been a part of my growth for this year. It's about the journey, bro. 
whether or not how fast it goes, no matter how slow it goes, just enjoy yourself. Just enjoy yourself. Because we have everything we need right now. And we have many different ways. It's just, are we going to allow ourselves to have it? You know, like, we could say we can't do anything. But if you got land, if you can go and take a walk outside, you have a little bit more than maybe a lot of people. Go outside, walk in the grass, stare out into the sun, and enjoy yourself. Put what you want to do first and chase that. And, you know, when you're able to bring the team with you and when you're finally able to help the people that you've been wanting to help all your life, once you are able to get to that position for yourself, that's when you can think about everybody else. But, like, that's when you can bring everybody with you. But it takes time. And maybe within that time, you'll figure out who are the real people and who aren't. So then you really know who you can bring with you and who you can't. And then that saves you more time, more energy, and it helps more of the people that are set to be with you. As you grow, the people who choose you, the people who see past the flaws, the people who see past the imperfections, the people who love you for exactly who you are because you both came together and you both choose each other every time my camera is lopsided and that has been bothering me for so long but it's okay i don't i i just this is a time of our lives especially if you're in your early 20s you know it is your choice on how you choose to keep going and how you choose to push and it is your decision on which which direction you want to go, which career you want to have. So don't feel that you can't do it. Never feel you can't do it because we are already worthy. We are already enough. It is. It starts within ourselves, and our peace starts from ourselves. Like it takes us to figure it out. It just depends on when you want to, and if you are sitting here. Asking yourself, what is this? What's going on? How do I fix this? How am I going to change this? Take it easy and be gentle on yourself. Because when you're healing and when you're going through this healing journey, you got to learn to be easy on yourself, dude. Like when I'm angry and I don't like being angry, I got to be gentle on myself. Because anger is a part of this experience or sadness is a part of this experience. Highs and lows come with life. So... Whether or not which place you're in right now, it is temporary. We got to have both to be able to climb up. We got to have both to be able to grow and transform and take ourselves where we want to be. What's important to you? How are you going to get it? And how important is it to you to start right now? I'm telling you right now. I made it a year doing this and there was a there was a portion of this year where I was doing two episodes a week and I was so proud of myself and I'm gonna get back there if that's what I want to do you know like the podcast is a great thing that I love to do on the side that I get to have with me as I grow and I go through my life so for me it's like it's evolving. I'm evolving in what I want to do in the things that matter to me. I have a list of the things I want to do, and I'm already marking them off. So that's what I'm going to do because that's me. That's my thing. But whatever your thing is, I'm here with you. And if you're here right now, you're a part of this community and everybody else is in it. Just so you know, we're all pushing each other higher. That's the point of this. This whole thing is for us to grow, for us to improve, for us to believe in ourselves and to pat each other on the back. Even when we make mistakes, because you got to make mistakes to grow, to become a better human being, to be a better version of yourself to become our greatest potential we have to go through many trials many tribulations we gotta we got to endure and we have to really be grateful even though we have to endure the sad times and the bad times too but for you know positivity optimism something that i keep within me for, like I just had a great conversation. For you to be an optimistic person and a positive person, you know, that doesn't mean you don't 
experience moments of negativity. It's just about how you either let it, like if you are a positive, optimistic person, you have learned how to just experience the negativity instead of experience. And it, it, you guys can probably hear this part, I guess. I don't know. Maybe not. Probably not. You can probably hear it on stream. Oh my God, I love this. This band is incredible. Oh my gosh. Um, It's been a fucking year of doing this. It's been a year of fucking doing this. And there's still people who don't see it as a real thing. So just so you know, even if you're working on something, you know, you got to believe in your work. You got to believe this is something that is important to you no matter what like if you are an artist if you want to create if you want to be everything that you've seen for yourself you got to stop being afraid that what you have isn't what you need to do because instead of instead of seeing it as oh dude i don't know if this is what i'm supposed to be doing you know doubt and belief keeps you sane doubt and belief just reminds you that you are still working towards something that you want that you want to do. But even if what you're doing isn't exactly what you're supposed to be doing, that's the whole point of life, to learn, to figure it out. And instead of seeing it as wasting time, bro, bro, just enjoy every second for what it is. And when you learn and what ends up fitting and intertwines perfectly, you know, you... You don't fail. There's no such thing as failing. Oh my gosh, Virgil Abloh, I just saw an incredible video on Instagram where he's like, dude, there's no such thing as failing. There's only learning. And you know, like, I have another quote that I, I have another quote that I intend on putting out, you know, and that is, you know, I don't know if I lost it just now or not, but um, it's gone. But Virgil Abloh was basically telling you like, the, oh yeah, strive to learn as much as you can while knowing nothing. We can't possibly know anything or everything because everything is constantly changing and there are new things being made. There are new, like not everything is a fact, not everything is an opinion, not everything is, you know, this or that, but like... If you think you know everything, reflect on that. Because not none of us knows everything, but we can strive to learn as much as we can. And if we start by trying to learn everything we can about ourselves, that's going to maneuver us into a position where we can only grow even further. Now, some of us may just have the same mundane life because that's what we want. If that's what y'all want, that's what you want. But if you got other ideas, if you got things that you will... If you got things in you that you want to achieve, but you don't want to die before you achieve them, work your ass off to get there. No matter what that may be, just do what you have to do to do what it is you want. That's been a huge point of this episode, which is I think is important because, you know, you'll... <laughs> You don't really know until you find out, and you might as well put in as much energy as you can in finding out than, you know, curiosity, dude. People try to say curiosity killed the cat, but, like, pick and choose. Just be responsible of your health. Think about your health. Think about, you know, how some things may affect you depending on how curious you are because you never know. But I, um, I just... My curiosity has led me to positions and led me to experiences and led me to friendships with people that, dude, I've never expected to ha to have, to share with other people. So, like, if I had listened to my fear in so many moments of my of my own growth, of my own life, you know, like, I would not be who I am today if I listened to my fear. I was scared shitless to leave Home Depot. I was scared shitless because I didn't think I'd have anywhere to go after I left my apartment. I didn't know what was going to happen in my life. I, I didn't know what was happening. 
But when I release control, and every single time I have to remind myself to release control, you know, I get a sense of calmness and peace. Because instead of thinking that I'm the only, like, instead of thinking that this is all I can do right, right, right now, instead of, like, doing that and just being go, 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 go all the time, I'm giving myself the time to just feel ease. I'm not, like, dude, I I was just having this conversation, you know. It's like how we were raised up to believe if someone gives us butterflies, that means we like them. Oh, that's our intuition telling us to go to that person. Hell no, motherfucker. Actually, it's the opposite. If someone is giving you butterflies or anxious feelings, probably better to not go near that. You know, excitement and nervousness are so close in how they feel that you... You have to decide what's actually making you nervous or what's actually exciting you because we're so used to, and like for the people who are so used to entering fight or flight in pretty much a lot of the situations that happen in their day to day lives, they are listening more to their sense of anxiety and they don't realize like these things that are actually getting them pumped up is excitement like it's actually excitement so when we have to go within and properly acknowledge the experiences we're having the emotions we're experiencing when we figure that shit out we decide how we flow through life because it's no more scared 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 oh i don't know if i can do this oh there's no security there one thing that I learned how to do was take risks healthy risks not you know not the ones that are going to lead me into a heap of trouble strengthen your intuition strengthen your connection to spirituality because that's only going to help you maneuver through life even more and the more that you put that first the more you put spirituality and connecting with source i truly believe that strengthens your opportunity in finding your happiness because then you know what god you know what god made us to be what God, you know, it, it, it's, it's so complex, at least for right now. But, um, to make you feel all right, it will be so nice. Oh my gosh, that was good. Oh my God, dude, every single, like, when I have these headphones on and I listen to my voice, I kind of just want to fucking sing. (laughs) I just want to sing my fucking heart out sometimes, bro. Dude, I love this. I love that I get to do this. I love, man, I love this life. You know, when I think about my spirit who lives within this body, you know, I think about, like, what wanted them to jump into my life. And then I have these experiences where I'm like, that's why. My spirit must be. I don't know who I am inside of me to God. But, like, you know, I'm one of those people who thinks I'm, I'm, I'm an important figure. I, I, I have... A high sense of importance here. I have I I believe that I have a lot of capability to change the world in ways that leads people to find their own way through it. And I wanna do that. I wanna do that as much as I can. I I don't know you know, I'm I'm slowly figuring out more and more of what my purpose is. I just know I'm here to help people. I know I'm here to experience everything that I want to experience you know like I'm just very excited for what's to come I'm I'm so grateful for where I'm at you know I was just saying to my aunt I was like this is the first time of my entire life year 25 where I can actually say that I love myself I love who I'm becoming I love who I am at this current moment I'm surrounded by incredible people who love me, support me, people who raise me up, people who, 
people who constantly remind me how much they love me. And, you know, it's kind of like what Mac Miller says. You know, people think love is so... Or is it, un- like, people believe... I will say, Mac and I believe that l- love is underrated. You know, we live in a world where people just shit on it. People think it's not fucking good. People are like, fuck love, bro. Like, And I, and I don't like that. I can't live in a world that doesn't have love, especially when I recognize that's the whole purpose of it. To come together, love each other, help each other grow, not be fucking individual, not be completely individualistic. Community is important. Having that sense of connection is important. And I believe, I, I believe that the world runs on trying to tear people apart. The world runs on trying to make people, oh my gosh, how could they like this? Comparisons, trying to lead us away from one another. That's not what I'm here for. What I'm here for is to bring people together. That's what's important. That's what we need. And I figured that out. Figured that out real damn well over the course of this year. And, you know... This isn't an this is not a place of my life where 25 is it. It's going to keep going. It's going to rec- it's going to invite more growth, more opportunities, more experiences. It's going to lead me to having to experience states of being that I may not be the happiest in. But that is the point of life. The journey is what is important to me. And I'm going to bring as many people as I can with me. And I don't want to do any less than that. I really don't. And I won't take any less. You know, like, I am not leaving this place until I achieve everything I've wanted to achieve. And I stand by that. And when my legacy stands... I just, I just, we'll figure it out on the way, man. I, um, I just want to say how grateful I am to have this opportunity. I just want to be, I just want to say again, before, before we end this, before we walk away from this, before we go out to do what we're supposed to do next, I just want, I just really want to say this, all right? You are more than capable of achieving what you want. It's how much you believe in yourself. And if people have to assume you're delusional for you to make it, that's fine. Do what you need to make it to where you want to be. And if people are going to say that you're selfish, if people are going to say that, you know, this is really fucked up, how you're not putting us or this first or whatever... You should sit, you should reflect for a moment and think, is what this person or what these people think more important than how I feel within myself right now? And, you know, I am a kind, compassionate person who just wants to see everybody else get to the same place or at least have the same opportunity to get to where they want to be quality having the opportunities that you know I have no one should be told that they can't do what it is that makes them feel alive no one can tell no one should be able to tell them that people should have the opportunity to chase their own dreams yeah there's going to be situations in life where people might have to learn how to not be a pushover and learn how to put themselves first. And that's okay. Sometimes you got to go through very hard times to figure out that it is you who has the power to put yourself first and to do what it is you want to do. You can either wait for it to happen to you or you can get out there right now and you can work day by day to it. Doesn't matter how long it takes because if you start now, you're already getting closer. And the more you work and the more you go and the more you add to it and the more intentional you are, it can only get better for you. 
So you instead of seeing, oh, this is another thing. Oh, another thing just happened. It's always something. Instead of saying that, instead of that being your internal monologue that's always going on inside your head, say, no, I'm done. I'm not taking this anymore. I know what I deserve. And transforming that as your internal monologue. I deserve this. You know what I did today? This is really transparent. I don't know how I feel about it later, but I'm very proud of myself. I walked into Walmart today because I was like, I want to go buy groceries. This is what I want to do. Before I left, I saw there was a glasses store. I was like, something tells me I should go in here and get my glasses tightened. Got my glasses tightened, damn straight, feeling good. And then I walk over to the Ray-Ban section. And I said, fuck these glasses. Look nice. I want these fucking glasses. I put them on as my glasses are getting tightened. And I asked one of the associates, hey, how do these look? Just wondering. Fit your face well. Yeah, I think they fit my face well too. Damn. And then the person who goes to tighten my glasses comes back. They give me my glasses. I ask them real quick. Hey, by the way, before you give me my glasses, what do you think of these? They fit your head. They fit your face real nice. I'm like, perfect. Um, do you get commission or anything? They're like, nah. And I was like, well, I want to buy these. First pair of Ray Bans I've ever bought for myself. First time I've ever actually like. I was just like, whoa. Why am I doing this? And, you know, part of me was like, it's impulsive. And then the other part of me is like, nah, your intuition pulled you into this fucking store. You looked at these glasses and you knew within yourself that you deserve them and you want them. So you bought them for yourself. And you don't feel bad for that. I don't. I don't feel bad for that because I deserve it. You know, I was looking at all these other glasses. I, I, could, I was doing all this other stuff. And I was like, every single time I was looking at this other stuff, I was like, no, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like it's for me. And, you know, I get all these, like, um, affirmations. And it's like, you know, I listen to my intuition and I make wise financial decisions. I'm in tune with that. But every single thing that doesn't work out, compared to the things that do work out, that's how you know what is for you and what is not for you. So when I walked out of that store, realizing I got these fucking glasses, I was like, I was supposed to get them. And it felt so good. It felt so fucking good. Because for the first time, I was actually able to recognize, instead of beating myself down and being like, oh my God, I'm spending money senseless. Nah, I don't believe that. I'm like, no, I deserve this. Everything that I've been working for, it's happening. So I'm like, I got to stay on it. Got to keep going. Got to keep going. So if you are questioning right now if you should keep going or not, you should keep going. Just keep going because it's going to get so fucking good. It's going to get so fucking amazing. You are going to receive abundance. I'm going to, I receive an abundance on a daily basis. My internal monologue, it's, I, dude, you got to believe in it. And if you believe in it to the point where people think you're delusional, you're fucking winning. You are winning. Believe in yourself. Don't stop believing in yourself. Make wise decisions. Protect yourself. But don't live in fear that you can't do it, don't deserve it, and don't have what it takes. All of us have what it takes. It's just how many times are you going to fall down until you realize that you don't want to get back up again? As a creative, as a person who wants to keep going, as a person who has achievements that they want to acquire, you can't give up. You can't. And sometimes you might have to go to a time where you have to step back and then return. That's okay. But never stop for good. Don't let the fire within your soul, the fire within your gut, you connect with yourself. Push yourself so that you will achieve the greatness that is for you. And you cannot give up. As much as that voice inside your head wants you to give up, don't give up. Don't give up up my ipad storage is full so you know you guys don't get to see this portion that's okay but um you heard it you sure did hear it and that's all that matters to me and i think with that i would like to say i hope you all have a wonderful morning a wonderful afternoon, a wonderful evening, 
and a wonderful night.